It's 5 a.m. and I'm not sleeping. As you can see, I'm wide awake. I'm not even sleepy. <laughs> I've been up most of the night and I just finished things that happened before the earthquake and I thought about going to sleep, but now I feel like I want to read something else that's going to be a little bit more satisfying. So I'm going to read the white book by Han Kang. I think it's pretty short. I already know that I like her writing. I find it profound and I'm going to read it and maybe go to sleep after that. It is 5 a.m., but I don't have anywhere to be early in the day. I don't have any meetings until in the afternoon, so I could sleep in the morning, later in the morning. But for now, reading. And in the white book, Han Kang is a real-life fictional writer, but in this one, she's writing some prose, some poetry. Emily Notham's Fair and Trembling and Han Kang's The White Book feature two real-life fictional writers sharing what may or may not be autobiographical experiences. I'm in the Union Square Park and I just finished reading Han Kang's The White Book and I wanted to pause and tell you about it. So you know that I'm a fan of Han Kang's writing. She and her translator, Deborah Smith, have brought us three books so far, translated from Korean to English. The first of those books that I read was The Vegetarian, which showed just how a woman wanting to make a choice about her own body, how sometimes that choice is not respected depending on where she lives. And while The Vegetarian was set in Korea, it's something that we can see happening in almost every society, every male-dominated patriarchal society where women's choices are not necessarily respected, especially when it comes to the choice where a woman says no in opposition to what a man might say yes, she should say yes. I read The Vegetarian in 2016 when it won the Man Booker Prize and in 2017 she came out with Human Acts which told the story of the survivors and victims of the Guangzhou Uprising in 1980 and that was one of the most profound and impactful books that I read last year. So I was really prepared for the white book to do the same for me. And it's probably a comparison to those two earlier stories that made me feel like the white book was a little bit wanting. It's less of a novel and more of a collection of meditations um, contextualized by a real life story. So let me explain. It tells the story of her mother losing her firstborn a young daughter that she gives birth to when she's alone. She's far away from contact with anyone else. Her husband is away at work for the next few hours. She's away from a telephone. And these dogs are going crazy. <laughs> the mother spends two hours with her newborn baby, trying to talk to the child, trying to encourage the child to live. But after a couple of hours, the child dies. But not before the mother says over and over, for God's sake, don't die. Don't die. And of course, this is her mother's first child, so Han Kang herself isn't there to witness the story. She's been told the story from her mother's perspective. And those two lines have become the refrain of her life. So as an adult, as a young adult, um, Kang has left Korea and she's relocated to Warsaw, Poland. And she is in the process of writing a book. And she decides that she's going to write a book about whiteness blankness, purity, I'm not sure what her theme was, but she wants to write a book about white things. And so she collects a list of things that are white. And within that list, I guess the list itself is an expression of what she's thinking. And as she meditates on the items in that list and fills out details of those, of those topics, it's an illustration of what she's thinking, it's an illustration of what she's feeling, um, a connection to a sister that of course she never got a chance to meet. For me, when I compare this new book with The Human Acts and The Vegetarian, the white book isn't nearly as expressive. In 120 pages of what felt like a minimalistic outline, I felt like the author called the reader into the collective art of storytelling, where she gave us a black and white but mostly white outline and called us to color it over with our own imagination, color it over with our own experiences, to create a book that we want to read, not necessarily that she has written. There was a lot of profound thought, the connection that she made between her own loss, the loss of her own sister's life, and later 
her mother also had a son that died in infancy and she compares her own loss with that of the people and the city that she's now staying in warsaw poland of course was heavy hit during world war ii and she makes this comparison of people dying and the people their survivors creating new life out of the loss because kang acknowledges that if her mother's first two children had lived Kang herself might never have been conceived and born and her younger brother also would not have been born and so she understands that she owes her own life to the death of those who had lived before her and she compares that and links it to the deaths of this the victims of World War II in Poland and so she speaks about an art gallery that is located in the halls of a former hospital a former hospital where people probably lost their lives and here now the building is being used to house beautiful art for visitors to contemplate the past and appreciate the present and the possibility of a future I thought that there were shades of brilliance in this book I just felt like it needed more I got an arc from NetGalley and I suppose that is why I didn't have the strongest connection with the writing because the print version includes pictures, which I think this book probably needed. It needed something more. And so I left reading this book wanting more, just more of everything that I know that Kang can deliver on. And so I'm giving this book, the version that I read, I'm giving it three stars because I know that it's more in the print version. And so I think I would probably try to get my hands on a print copy just for comparison to see what I miss and whether I can bump this rating up to a four. This has been my experience reading Kang's books. The first time I read The Vegetarian, I didn't like it. In fact, I had to stop and start a couple of times before I eventually finished. And I think it's something that I'm going to do again with Human Acts. So that is my experience of the white book. And yeah, I'm in the park. <laughs> In New York, things keep going, no matter whether you're filming a video or not, the park needs to get clean. So I'm off now to the Strand. I think I'm gonna buy a book because if I'm in Union Square, I can't not visit the Strand bookstore. And so I'll take you along with me. I'm at the Strand and I'm getting the line of beauty by Alan Hollinghurst. This is for my Man Booker prize winning collection. So I'm in the park doing a little bird watching and of course reading flights by Olga Tokerjok. reading flights by Olga Tokerjok and I'm not going to talk too much about it here because this was the book that we chose for the Run Right Reads book club selection for September so I'm going to do a single book review for this I'm going to put that up on the channel in a couple of days but I really enjoyed this book I won't say that it's a novel because I'm not sure that it is if it is it's a very experimental form of a novel but it is these linked meditations some of them are short some of them are much longer and they follow very different characters but they all have one thing in common flight or flight a little bit of my backstory about this book i've wanted to read it ever since it won the man booker international prize and i was gonna buy a copy but then i got notified that i won a copy in a goodreads giveaway and so i decided not to buy my own copy i was gonna wait of course for my free book to come to me I posted a giveaway on my channel and Tiffany from Hierarchy of Reads won 
congratulations again, Tiffany. I hope you've been reading and enjoying it. And so I requested this from the library to read in the interim. And the month has finished and I still haven't gotten my copy from Goodreads. I know it's coming. It will come at some point, but I'm really glad now that I requested this one. And on the New York Public Library online catalog, I noticed that the title is Beguni. It means something more like wanderer, nomad. Not just flights, but the people who move, the people who wander, the people who are constantly traveling because they are not moored to any one place for whatever reason. When I think of nomads, I usually think of people who are traveling towards something that will promote their survival or traveling away from something that is threatening them. And in this book, the author really showed people at various stages of that transition, of that journey. Whether people who are leaving because they want to leave something behind or people who are constantly searching for something that is a goal, something that is ephemeral and is not really available because when you get there, you have a different ambition. You've changed in the process of the journey and so how do you ever reach that place? There's a lot in this book that I love. I love a book that includes some philosophy, some psychology, some science. I love when an author includes pictograms and diagrams and maps. And this one is the first on page five of the book. She includes this opposite a paragraph where she talks about, my parents were not fully the settling kind. They moved from place to place time and time again until finally they paused for longer near a country school, far from any proper road or a train station. She uses that kind of a paradoxical scene to usher in her own decision to travel. And it's a beautiful read. It's the kind of book that I enjoy reading. And so I'm gonna talk more about this. I'm gonna film a book review of this one. So let's not talk anymore about this one right now. And so I got this one in just under the timeline, but I still have a few hours. I think I have enough time to finish the M train so that I can share that with you as well. Stay tuned for that discussion. <laughs> Patty Smith and I chose this one because a few days ago I made a video entitled help me where I gave you guys six books to choose from and I asked you to tell me which book you'd like me to read before the end of the month and I got a lot of very different responses some people suggested this book some people suggested other books I chose this one because I was heading downtown and I thought why not read M train when I'm close to the M train and so I showed a picture where I was downtown at the M train. I was glad that I read this book because I'm a writer, like Patti Smith is a writer. I'm also a visual artist because I love photography and pictures the way Patti Smith probably loves photography and pictures, even if I'm not as skilled at presenting it as she is. But I loved a lot about this book. I'm always fascinated by the way authors choose to include stories, whether fictional or other people's stories, in their own biographies. And in writing her memoir, Patti Smith included the story of a man named Jean Genet, who empathized with the prisoners that were incarcerated on some island. But he really liked the prison that they were in, in some way. And he was sentenced to be in prison there, but right before his sentence was to be executed, the prison closed because of inhumane conditions and so he was sent to serve out his time somewhere else and he lamented i am sure of my infamy because you know he was so sure that he was going to become one of the celebrated prisoners in that jail and alas now his goal will never be accomplished not because of anything that he did or failed to do but because the goal itself is no longer there I'm fascinated by the fact that Smith included that story at the beginning of this memoir because it was as though she was foreshadowing what she was going to share on these pages. That as a writer, whatever her goal is, she would never be able to fully accomplish that goal because the goal itself is no longer there as soon as you approach it. As a writer, I identify with this thought and I'm sure this is something that other creative people could also see. 
in their own work, in their own lives, that you start off with this goal, maybe to reach everyone, to write the stories that would appeal to everyone. But you can't because as you're writing, you change, the words change, the people who you're writing to, they change. And you're never fully able to encapsulate all the thoughts and ideas that you would want to. Another way that she projects this idea is that while she is first and foremost a writer and this book should be able to stand on its own, she also includes photographs that she has taken as though in her attempts to capture and portray a memory. The fact that she's writing can't fully represent what it is that she wants to say and so she has to also include some visual medium to appeal to another sense that her writing cannot satisfy. And so as a writer myself, I identify with a lot of what Smith was saying in this book and I loved it. I could see where it might not be the kind of book that everyone would love and appreciate. But as a writer, I loved it. And I think this is it. I think this is the end of my reading for September. It's September 30th. I'm gonna do a separate book links video because I did my reading vlogs. So look out for that video. Thanks for watching. If you've been watching all four reading vlogs, then let me know down in the comments that you enjoyed them, if you did, and whether you want me to continue doing this in October. So thanks for watching this video. Please comment if you don't usually comment. I'd love to hear from you today. If you're not yet a subscriber, I'd love if you hit the button and subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. So you'll know when I post the videos. I don't have a regular posting schedule. I post whenever I have a bookish idea that I want to share with you guys. But thanks for watching and let's talk in the comments. So until next time, happy reading.